In this video, we'll study how to use sequential pairwise voting to find the winner of an election. Here's a typical problem. An election was held with the results shown here. Determine the winner using sequential pairwise voting with the agenda D, A, C, B. So the way sequential pairwise voting works is we have a series of one-on-one -on -one matchups. We take the first two candidates in the agenda and match them up against each other. And this will be a one-on-one -on -one election just like the ones that we were studying when we did the Condorcet method. So whoever wins that matchup will go up against the next candidate in the agenda. And whoever wins that matchup will go up against the next candidate in the agenda, and so on, until we reach the end of the agenda. And then the winner of the last matchup will be the winner of our election. So let's see how this plays out. So our first matchup is D versus A, and again, using the same process that we did when we used the Condorcet method, we can figure out that in a D versus A election, D defeats A 28 to 15. So D moves on to the next round. Now we have a D versus C matchup. So who wins that? Well, again, looking through our profile, we can figure out that C is going to beat D 30 to 13. So C moves on to face B in the final round. So now in the C versus B election, who wins that? Well, again, we can go through our profile and determine that B beats C 23 to 20. And so that means that B is the winner of our election using this agenda. But what we'll sometimes find using sequential pairwise voting is that if we change the agenda, sometimes the winner can change also. So now let's use the agenda BADC and see what can happen. Once again, we can set up our matchups. Our first matchup is B versus A, and then that winner will go up against D. The winner of that matchup will go up against C, and then the winner of that final matchup will be the winner of our election. So we start out with B versus A. And again, similarly to what we did before, B will beat A 28 to 15. Our next matchup is B versus D, so that will be uh, won by D. D wins 23 to 20. And so our final matchup is D versus C, and what we'll find is that C beats D 30 to 13. And so now with this different agenda, C is the winner of the sequential pairwise method. What we might notice here is that the process for finding the sequential pairwise winner is similar to what we do to find the Condorcet winner, except for sequential pairwise we only consider some of the one-on-one -on -one matchups, the ones that come up as we go through our agenda, whereas for the Condorcet winner we consider all one-on-one -on -one matchups. So what we'll find is that if there is a Condorcet winner, then that winner will be the sequential pairwise winner no matter what agenda is used. So what just happened, what we just observed where with one agenda B was the winner and with a different agenda C was the winner, that can't happen if there is a Condorcet winner. Let's see if we can figure out why that is. So let's suppose we had an election with five candidates, call them A through E, and let's say that we know that D is the Condorcet winner. Well, what I want to try to explain is why D will be the sequential pairwise winner no matter what agenda we use. Let's look at a couple agendas and see how this plays out. So let's try the agenda D, A, E, C, B. So once again, we can set up our tournament brackets. And now remember, all we know about this election is that D is the Condorcet winner. But that means that D defeats all of its opponents in one-on-one -on -one matchups. So in the first round, D beats A, because D is the Condorcet winner, so it beats everyone else. In the second round, D beats E, because D is the Condorcet winner. D beats C, and D beats B. Since D is the Condorcet winner, D will win all of these one-on-one -on -one elections, and so D will be the sequential pairwise winner. Well, what if we used a different agenda where D is towards the end? Let's try this agenda, A, C, B, E, D. Once again, we can set up our brackets. Well, now, since all we know about this election is that D is the Condorcet winner, we don't know who wins the A versus C election. And we also don't know who's going to win the next matchup, B versus whoever wins in the A versus C election. And we don't know who wins the next matchup either. But whoever gets matched up against D in the last round is going to lose to D. Since D is the Condorcet winner, D beats all of its opponents in one-on-one -on -one matchups. So it doesn't matter which candidate gets to the last round with D, D will win. So when we have a Condorcet winner, no matter what agenda you use, that Condorcet winner will be the sequential pairwise winner.